In the 1960s and 70s, uh, when uh, the field stations and, uh, and other localities around um, San Jose uh, were still available, incidentally, I, uh, my first visit to Costa Rica was in 1959, and I remember coming in uh, as a guest of uh, United Fruit because they wanted an entomologist to see uh, what to do about the ants that were promoting the, uh, the little uh, hymenopteran wasp parasites lay their eggs in the bananas to keep them, or the, uh, the, make the bananas seem scarred and, and un to make them unsaleable. But at any rate, I used that to come on in. I remember so much of the central plateau was forested so if you went back that far, you actually could do a lot of field work just a short distance out of San Jose. Um, and that's mostly gone now. But um, to, hit, to get into a, uh, a forest, a natural environment like that, uh, is just enormous uh, in its uh, potential and stimulating power. Uh, for reasons I think every naturalist here present would understand. Uh, even if you have a relatively well-worked group, ants are moderately well-worked, uh, then uh, everything you find is a clue to something else that you could discover that might or might not be important. And uh, it's just an abundance as you work your way, say, just collecting initially for taxonomic purposes of uh, opportunities that present themselves to you. Something that the insect, the ant or other insect is doing, somewhere it's located, something that's stalking it, uh, something that might be a mating flight, something uh, that might be a recent emergence, uh, from where? Where is the larva? Is that known? And on and on, where you have within a few hundred hectares, uh, upwards of tens or even hundreds of thousands of insects alone, uh, then it is uh, the scientific naturalist is a child in a candy shop uh, who uh, can select problems and have a, uh, start working on them without even consulting the literature yet and be sure that probably something new and exciting will emerge. This is an aspect of um, a place like the ones that the OTS manages that aren't, isn't appreciated enough. The um, potential and the power of scientific natural history. That's what I'm talking about, scientific natural history. So what has changed over the years? Not that much. So much of original research, really original research, depends upon the aha moment of just people who understand a little bit about this group or that group, or maybe not much at all about this one that presents the aha moment whenever 10 a.m. or 3 p.m. when you're out there. Um, you know with a certain degree of certainty that you're already on to something important and the technology follows. We didn't have the technology much except microscopy and I was doing work back at Harvard and Bert was joining me on some of the natural products chemistry of pheromones of the ants uh, but uh, basically in the field we didn't have a lot of this technology. It was done uh, with the eye primarily and the ear and then the search for uh, this um, uh, wonderland of biological structure that was laid out for our delectation and study and close study. Of course, what has been added are the means for digitizing and recording large sums of information. How I would have liked to have had just one small recorder with me when I was in New Guinea and Australia and New Caledonia in the early 50, in the, in the uh, late 1950s. Uh, so I could have talked as I explored instead of sitting down and writing notes. Well, we have that, of course. 
And we have uh, photography, which uh, is at a very high level of sophistication to record things accurately. Even to record, if you wish, an ultraviolet light so we can see what the insect may be seeing on a flower. We have uh, the means of collecting greatly improved. The, um, we, uh, in addition to the standard techniques of uh, collecting that were used back in the 60s and 70s, uh, we have new ones such as the fogging of the canopy to, uh, to make uh, studies of uh, the fauna much faster and more effective. We have the, um, uh, the towers that allow us to sit with semi-comfort for hours at a time, and the cranes that are being used now increasingly uh, to lift us and move us over the uh, canopy. And um, then, of course, we have information retrieval. Astonishing. You can now, uh, thanks to the Encyclopedia of Life and in our field, of no, a part of that ant wiki, uh, you can get a specimen of something on almost any group of organism uh, except perhaps the most obscure and poorly studied, and uh, call up what you think it might be. And even if you're not sure what it might be, even the genus, you often can scan uh, what information is available in these encyclopedias on the screen, calling it up anywhere in the world, including right there in the field uh, where you may be working in an, in an OTC, uh, OTS facility. Uh, so it is possible, I, I think, I haven't tried to do it this way, it's possible to go down innocent with no ideas, you know, nothing but an eagerness, like a, um, like a freshman biology student at Oberlin, and uh, enter the forest and uh, search, uh, start finding things, hit upon something, might it be that remarkable bug that sits looking exactly like part of the termite mound that spears termites from time to time? Endless, endless, endless phenomena. Spots one of these things, sits down, starts observing, studying. I remember so well uh, Bert and I deciding we would find out why the giant bullet ants, Paraponera, uh, that everybody fears, justifiably so, tend to nest at the base of one leguminous tree. And um, so uh, right on the spot, he and I put foliage from many kinds of trees in a cafeteria of tubes and then released the queens that were newly mated that happened to be on the ground at that time and watched them patrol up and down until they found the tube that had crushed leaves of that one species, and in they went, obviously, to start their nest. Well, you can do this kind of experiment today, uh, or then, as well as you could do it today. What is added is that you can then uh, do statistical analyses with the aid of your, uh, uh, of the net, and uh, if you wish, find out if this is really a new result. And if you wish, you could then get the literature done sitting there at that table. For example, at La Selva, I once remarked there are more species of ants uh, foraging on the tables uh, at the dining room in La Selva than occur in Massachusetts. That's a gross exaggeration. But anyway, sitting there, you could uh, do, review the literature, prepare the paper, pick the journal, send the paper off to the journal for review, all without missing a single meal uh, or leaving uh, the station. So that's what you can do with modern technology, part of what you can do with modern technology, and that's a great benefit, but it is not a revolutionary improvement over what we had 50 years ago. And that is curiosity about the phenomena, totally unexpected, that occurred and waited, waiting serendipitously for us as, we, as you step upon a trail and go into the rainforest.